Hello, 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 everyone, and thank you for coming to the channel, Deb Chanel's 48th World. Get into it. Okay, we're coming back with another hot and flashy one, but it kind of hurts my heart and my feelings because I used to be a supervisor over at Babies or Rush in Dunwoody, and I had the distinct pleasure of meeting both of these young people that I am going to be talking about, Okay. Yes, I met Stevie J and I met Jocelyn. They weren't together uh, coming into the store, but I met them separately. And they were standout people. And that, it, it pretty much, in a nutshell, got me to thinking that sometimes when you see people on these ratchet reality uh, show-based shows, they are not the people that you necessarily see in person. And don't get me wrong, some people are true to form. They ratchet and trash it on, on TV and you see the same crap out there in the streets when you come across them for whatever reason. But like I said, I got the chance to meet both on different occasions and they were stand up people, not giving me any of the stuff that they portray themselves as being on TV. Okay, so it just hurts my heart. Y'all were once in love. Y'all were once in love. Okay, and showing it and giving it to us. Y'all was like the new Bunny and Clyde. Okay, I saw y'all as a new Bunny and Clyde before I saw uh, Beyonce and Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? I just saw honey, she was just dangerous in love, Miss Beyonce, and she wanted to go get with a bug, honey, a bug. And hey. Opposites attract. Go on, do what you got to do, okay? Now, I know it's been a rocky uh, type of relationship between the two, Jocelyn and Stevie. You know, he didn't come to be the man that she thought he was, you know, promising her all this fame, fortune, and entertainment, glorious life, and promoting her music and believing in her talents. I know, I know. We, we all know that, Okay. And they had to separate. All right. But they made this beautiful, beautiful young girl. What? She's giving me Stevie and Jocelyn all together wrapped up in one big pretty bow. Okay. They made that baby when they made that baby. Okay. I am geared to even tell you she's going to have both, both of their personalities. Okay. And ain't nothing wrong with it. Just as long as she tailor it to herself. Tailor it to herself. Okay. Be true to herself, not her parents, okay? Because they're both in two different extremes, you know, on the spectrum. So if she can find some balance between the both and then live her best life, I'm all there for Because I know Mimi Child's going to be somewhere in entertainment. I hope it ain't the, the, uh, the walk of life her mama done went down. But, hey, I just think the kids are going to learn the mistakes and the mishaps that their parents have done on this reality type of platform of making money, being entrepreneurs. I just feel that Stevie, uh, younger kids are going to do the thing and they're going to do it right. But why Bunny Bella can't have her parents act right on her? I mean, yes, we've been seeing Jocelyn having the most attention and she's been caring for baby girl Bunny Bella. Yes, yes, yes. We all know she's a good mother in that respect and I love to see it. But when you do mix heterosexuals making babies things don't work out you go into that plateau of okay i want so custody because i want child support or no i want so custody. here why don't we just both have joint custody and we just uh take care of the child with whoever she's with that particular six months of the year or if we're gonna go back and forth it, you know you keep it one month i keep it one month you keep them one month uh, and bring bring him back, bring him back to me the other month. You know, something like that. Because joint custody means everything is split down the middle. Both parents get 50-50% involved with the investment of this child's future. Okay? But lately, we know we've been hearing Jocelyn saying, Steve ain't paying child for him. He ain't doing that. He ain't doing that. And, of course, I haven't really seen Steve doing any work lately. But then I'm not in the entertainment field. I'm more side. I'm on the more side of introducing the entertainment to the world on my platform, spinning it how I get down with it. Okay, how I'm perceiving it. What's my take on it? You know, my opinion, that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Okay, just like you with me. Okay, but yes, we've been seeing Jocelyn spend a lot more time than we're seeing Stevie spending a lot more time 
with Bunny Bella. Now, I don't know because I ain't no uh, seer or fortune teller. Uh, what's going on? Is Jocelyn just using this as a tagline story because she's fooling around over there at marriage boot camp trying to say her and DJ Ballistics are in a relationship that's leading towards marriage and they're having complications with communication. You know what I'm saying? That's all that marriage boot camp is about. It's trying to strengthen or give you tools to use to get your situation with your partner together okay so it can flourish and develop into something wonderful and y'all will be going old and uh together and rocking and rocking chairs on your porch okay that's the whole idea of marriage is getting old with that person that you sat and took vows with okay but yes honey stevie it's you know he claiming joseph's on fit is d da da whatever and i'm like dang is it more so DJ Ballistics is getting in on Jocelyn's head or is Faith Evans getting in um, Stevie's head and, or head and they both just colliding with each other because they're not listening to themselves and that child that they got to raise, that they have to put forth an effort, a good faith effort and making sure she gets all what she needs, okay? What is going on with them? It seems like... Stevie got married to Faith and he just forgot about everything and he running around making sure Faith's career is good when I thought her career was good without you, bro. I don't know. Then we got Jocelyn. She ain't definitely pushing DJ Ballistics around. Okay, it seems like he got her in check this time because Jocelyn usually has Stevie in check or what she's giving us on this platform. Okay? That's social media when she goes and say this, that, and the third. However, I haven't been seeing the same reactions and demeanor that she puts forth in telling Stevie what to do that she does with DJ uh, Beats Ballistic or whatever the hell his name is. I don't know. Let's just call him DJ B. Keep it all straight in my mind. DJ B is who he's going to be. Okay. But anyway, I, I just don't understand. I mean, I need the love. I need the compassion. I need the strength of these two wonderful individuals. Okay. To get it right, get it right for Bunny Bella's sake, for Mimi's child's sake, for his other children's sake, okay? And not let them grow up and be in wretchedness, in a wretched world, and they trying to get it all together. Now, we don't need all that. What we need is a little bit more love, okay? A little and a lot more love that's going on. But let's get into this article because I gave you pretty much my spiel of what I think is going on. And uh, you can get down in the comments to see if you agree uh, with me that you're saying, saying the same thing. No, it's these two outer or, or outer, um, well, she, let's just call it what it is, hell. It's Stevie's wife, Faith, getting all up in the Kool-Aid when she definitely don't need to be in the Kool-Aid, okay? Let them work it out because that's their baby. They ain't got nothing to do with Faith. <laughs> And her situation of being stepmom or whatnot, no. Faye, you don't need to have no uh, no kind of say in this situation right here. Because they don't even know what they got going on. If they don't know what they got going on, we definitely don't need your feedback. Now, DJ Ballistics is, you know, filling um, Jocelyn's head up with some nonsense. That's just a controlling ass man. He look controlling. He look like he'll smack you around a couple of times if you get on his nerves or you ain't doing something he tell you to do. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting from him. I I, I don't like his energy. I I just I don't know. That's just my feels. My point when I look at him, he don't look like he giving me too much of anything that's positive. Okay, even when I've seen him on the video that you uh try to put him in from time to time on your social media. Okay, there's no friendliness. There's no warmness. There's no invitingness that he gives off with his energy. Okay? I'm just saying. I might be wrong, but that's just what I'm feeling. But we're going to get into this article that was written by bckonline.com. I guess they are a new blogging site giving you uh, entertainment gossip and other uh, articles that's facing the world out there. I don't know. It just came across my news feed. I thought I'd get them a little taste, a little feel, a little 
peekaboo and see if they can handle me and my commentary. If I take some of their information, give them props, of course, and tell you where I got it from. That's called citing resources. If you were in school, had to write papers in college or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Get the people they just do so they don't come looking for you, okay? All righty. But anyway, yes, it comes from bckonline.com and the journalists or the uh person writing out the article for them is called Sari, a Sari, S-A-R-I-E. Okay. She broke this story on August 9th. So let's take a peekaboo on what she feels, uh, what she don't put out on social media about this couple. Her tagline or her article headline reads, Jocelyn Hernandez wants sole custody of her daughter, Bunny Bella returned. Okay. Yep, they snatched her from her because they had put out a warrant on her because she was running around them streets. I don't know if it was in Miami, was it in L.A., you know, California, or I don't know what Jocelyn was doing. But she just called herself, no, I'm, I like the custody where it is, and I'm keeping her, and, you know, that's just how we're going to roll. No, I'm not letting him uh, going to see her because he ain't paying child support. I'm doing everything. With the help of my finances, other people's finances, family finances. Hey, she getting taken care of. He don't need to be around her because he's just a deadbeat dad. Well, I understand. I understand what you're talking about because I experienced that uh, somewhat myself. You know what I'm saying? And it's called self-indulgence. And you can't make nobody pay child support because you can put them up there in the system. And they still won't pay. But they'll do some type of infraction where the law is involved on a totally different whole matter. And then they don't keep him in the system as a, being a dad be dad. So that just piles on to whatever they got him for. Okay. Speaking from experience, I do know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then you get this uh, backflow money. But then it doesn't cover uh, the expenses that you already been still putting out. It helps. It's like a drop in the bucket, but it doesn't solve anything. At the time, women, we got to go out there, be the beat of our own drum, get your spirit, uh, spirituality and check me. I love the Lord. The, uh, I love Jesus Christ. I'm a, a Christ follower. And I you know I know the Lord for myself. I don't need nobody in the pulpit preaching to me about it. I know the wonderful testimonies. I have given testimonies that the Lord has brought me through and still taken me out of. Okay? Because I trust him and only him. Okay, can I get an amen? Amen. Okay, thank you, Jesus. So, if you got your spirituality on check, girl, go forth and be great. That is all my mantra for anybody and myself. I take it to heart and I do exactly what I'm telling y'all to do. Go forth and be great. You don't need to beg nobody, no ex-boyfriend or ex-husband or whatever to help you with something that they help create. You know what I'm saying? They're going to do what you got to do and the Lord will bless you or you will get your good karma come back to you because you did it because it was out of love. Okay. And you ain't finna go down like no sinking ship without no rafting boat or wrapped around your neck and your children or child's neck. Okay. You're going to be good no matter what. You keep shining. You keep doing what you got to do to, put, to protect that child, to provide for that child, and to love on that child and give that child some spirituality. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't be involved with something positive. They're going to fall for a lot of lot of negative shit. You can trust me. If you don't teach them, the streets and other people that don't care nothing about them will teach them. They will learn the hard school knocks of life. That's their college, okay? And they would get it through self-indulgence of experience of people that don't give a damn about them out there. So I tell you people, please, please, please teach your children on the way you want them to go. And hopefully that's a positive walk of life, okay? Teach your child. Don't let other people teach your child because they don't have a love for your child, okay, that you will have for your child. So, you know, like I said, just to, you know, I have sidebars here and there. You know, I go off topic and script because it can be in my spirit. I got to speak what I got to speak, maybe to help somebody. Okay, because that definitely show sure have helped me. Because I had time, I had to experience some shit to learn some shit, and half the time I didn't learn it from my family. I had to learn through other people that I saw that were doing good things, doing good works. And being the, the the type of role model that you want to portray yourself to be, okay? 
if you do good, you teach one, you learn one. You learn one, you teach one, you, you and it just keeps pulling up. You know what I'm saying? Don't have that crap mentality, bucket syndrome. Okay, well, you got yours, so you're going to keep everybody else down. No, nah, stop the oppression, people. We already got oppressed with the white man a long time ago. Some of us still being oppressed. Really, hell, all of us being still repressed because we got that dollar and that uh, college education going on, and it still don't match up. And then if you're a woman in that uh, running field of competition, we're still being deemed. Not worthy, okay? So it's a lot of things we have to just, you know, take it and, and turn it into lemonade. You know what I'm saying? We get thrown lemons. Because I'm telling you, if you're black, if you're a woman, and you educated, you're a threat. That's a triple threat out there, okay? I'm going to say it again. If you're black, you're a woman, and you're educated, trust and believe you're going to have a lot of people throwing salt very well on what you're trying to do out there just because who you are and what you represent that's some good nuggets i'm dropping some good wisdom so keep it up keep it write it down you know take a picture of it so you can remind yourself what the odds are when you're dealing in society today against you so you can arm yourself with the i say the armor of god the love of god put the whole armor of god on you okay and if you can't get into the spirituality of what I believe, damn, get some positivity in this in your life, okay? And keep away from the negativity. Let that be your uh let that be your guide to get you through this society, this world that we live in. Because it's so much hatred, it's so much negativity, and so many people want to bring you down just because who you are. They see your light in you, they see you shining, trying to be positive. And some people just don't like that. They don't like it. So they'll make up lies, they'll make up stories on you that they know ain't true. But I tell you, if you keep telling the same lie over and over and over again, some people are gonna believe it. Okay. And and to your detriment, they will try to bring you down. But hey. I serve a mighty and good Lord. I serve a mighty good Lord, okay? That has his enemies and my enemies under his foot as my footstool. He prepared a table before me and all of my enemies' presence, okay? And we're going to sit and eat together. And you're going to bless me even though you don't want to bless me. Because the Lord got his hold on you. And yes, you will bless his child. You don't want to. You don't know why you're doing it. But you don't have to know, Okay? I am a child. I am a child of God. I am his princess. So get into it. All right. But getting back to the story, like I said, I do my sidebars and sometimes I have to just speak to y'all. Okay. Because the word be coming through me for you all from the Lord. Okay. Not the cussing and stuff. Now, you know, I have to repent for that later on. But usually when I'm speaking and it sounds good, that's the Lord flowing through me. That's the Lord. I'm, I'm letting the Lord use me as a vessel to reach somebody. So if you can learn from this experience, this video, take it with you and grow. Okay, that's all it's about growth, positive growth. But getting on into this article again, we're going to say the title that Miss uh, Saria or Sari put out. Joyce Hernandez wants sole custody of her daughter, Bonnie Bella, return. Okay, people want hell and ice water too, I'm pretty sure. But hey, sometimes it flows that way, sometimes it don't. You just got to deal with the plate that was given to you. Take the good with the bad and straighten up. Do right. Do right. And that was me, not in this article. Going back to the article, it says, Jocelyn Hernandez wants full custody of her daughter, Bonabella, taken from Stevie J and returned to her, according to new court documents. The former love and hip hop star is fighting a judge's ruling, which grants sole custody of Bonabella to Stevie J until August 15, 2019. Now, my thing with this is, uh, Jocelyn, you had custody. But like I said, I don't know if this family done got in your head and you think it's good entertainment to use this as a storyline while you're taping, you know, on marriage boot camp and, and you know, the and controversy that you're uh, involved with now. You think it's going to make good drama headlines for you and give you a, a, a good taste in the entertainment world to pump you up. Well, see, you chose the wrong, you chose the wrong stick this time, Joseph. Sometimes it ain't about the money. It ain't about pushing your career a little further. It's about handling business that's real. You know, uh, your baby being taken from you because you don't want Stevie J to have access. Now, I know, I know it hurt. I know it hurt. You've been doing the darn thing with the help of yourself, your family, friends, and all that. And Stevie just been. You know, lather the gagging around, sliding on the payments, missing the payments. But he out here, you know, being dressed up, going to award shows, 
you know, thinking, having everybody think that he's on point when it's something different. I know it hurt. I know it hurt, girl. But sometimes you just have to dust it off and let it go. All right? Because God knows when you're in war with your ex and y'all have to decide where you want the baby, where the baby's best do at to be raised in an environment and stuff like that. It does get a little tipsy sometimes. And sometimes we say and do things out of anger. And we think we're getting the best of that other person when, you know, the children's on the hurt. And if he's not hurting the child and you think in your heart that he's going to watch the child and do good. And he's going to be with the child 98% of the time. I know he might have to go do some, you know, travel and just that third. But then that's when he need to return the child back to you. If he's going to be gone for the weekend, he's going to be gone for a week. Yeah, put her on a jet back to the mama okay we don't need other entities taking care of the child because that's the whole reason why it says joint custody or somebody else has sole custody that means you're going to be paying attention to that child you're going to take care of that child you're going to make sure make sure that child is good okay not uh faith going to be looking at the child taking care of the child and just that that now that's the second party okay that's the second party unless they were good friends and she trusts faith but it seems to me like she don't care nothing for you or faith, okay? I don't think she cares about her well-being. Now, I can't say on Jocelyn's side, you know, when she was much little, littler, and Jocelyn did have a lot of time, a lot of bonding time with uh, Princess Bonnie Bella, okay? So, you don't want to take the child out of familiar environment, her familiar daily living you know, because it can traumatize the child. She can be like, well, damn, where my, my, my toy I had, you know, that I always play with. Or I, I like my room better. Who room is this, dad? I, you know, because you ain't found or, or put no foundation uh, for your daughter when she do come to visit. You know, she should have her own room. She should have her own play thing so she knows when she go see daddy. She got Mr. Fufu over there. Or maybe she take Fufu with her when she go home, but she bring him back because she know that's where she got it from, from daddy's house. Now, she only knows pretty much her digs and her dwellings with her mom because that's been an everyday thing. That's something she's used to. And you got to have that repetition for that little girl right now because these are her formative years. So, you know, y'all going back and forth like this. It's not good for the baby girl. It's not good for the baby girl. You know, y'all had the schedule set up. But like I said, Jocelyn was taping and this, that, and the third. And she seemed to can't be without her bunny Bella. But hell, it's going to be time for Bonnie Bella to be going to school. So you got to cut some of them strings, Jocelyn. She's going to have to go to school. She's not going to be with you 24-7 like you're used to her being with you. So some, some changes are going to rise, okay? Or rise. So we need you to get it together mentally on that, that stage. We all, as good parents, we go through it. We don't want the specific people around our children because we only trust, you know, certain amount of people around our child that's what you should be but sometimes with this situation when people remarry they start having other families uh you may not be a part of that family unit which is sad because y'all definitely still should have some type of rapport if you're not good with steve you still should have somewhat of a good rapport with faith you know i'm just saying if it had to come to that uh, where you can't, you just can't get in his head no more because it's too empty up there. So a better part of him would be to talk to his ex-wife. Now she being snooty and and don't act like she care or give a damn. Then you just in shitsville, okay? But I would tell the judge all that. You know, my faith might be good for entertainment and people may love her from that, but they don't know the real faith. I don't see the real faith without the makeup, the hair, and all that. I don't see her when she when seen her when she stripped down butt naked. Not the butt naked part. Not in her birthday suit, but just when she's an everyday uh woman okay not the cameras rolling or she's on stage but not that faith i'm talking about the faith that wake up in the morning when she's allowed by the grace of god okay i'm talking about that faith all right but um get back to this article it said um stevie j went to the course earlier this week to request action after joyce and hernandez traveled to los angeles with bonnie bella instead of meeting him for a scheduled trade-off Stevie J traveled to Los Angeles to meet up with Jocelyn for the exchange, but was further disappointed when Jocelyn went to Florida with their daughter. Okay, so that's basically what the judge was saying. She was on a run. She wasn't paying attention to nothing that was set in stone as far as who has visitation on this day, that day, this week, that week, that month, and so forth. Okay, Jocelyn like, uh-uh, I'm going to make this a storyline. I'm just saying this. I don't know if it's true. She running back and forth across <laughs> state lines and 
Steve, I don't know where he get the money from if he ain't paying child support. How he getting flight time, okay, or car time? Well, he can't have car time trouble. He can rent some. But them flying uh, uh, expenses, they can get very detrimental. All right, but I guess he's using faith money. Go figure, okay? Going back to the article, they're showing def definitely pictures of Miss Bonnie Bella uh, and her reactions to certain photos they're taking her in. And another one on hit man Stephen J on his Instagram He's showing Bonnie Bella getting her hair done and how he got her nicely dressed. You know, having good daughter time, uh, dad and daughter time. And now I think she was around her uh, sisters, her stepsisters as well. And they were showing her love. And nothing ain't wrong with it, you know. It, nothing is, is ever wrong with it. It's just the parents get into their business and their feelings. And that's where the whole stuff goes south. But uh, the whole point of it, because she, she didn't really write too much, but, it, you know, I, I'm sure I covered enough for you all. They just in shitsville with one another. Jocelyn don't want Stevie to have a baby. Stevie don't want Jocelyn to have a baby. Maybe Stevie just don't want to pay child support. And uh, Jocelyn wants him to catch up on his child support before she lets him see the baby. And that's just my spiel of how I feel, my opinion, okay? I'm just saying, for me going through that uh, type of experience, I kind of uh, can gather how people are feeling and how their emotions are running high when things are not done a certain way to their perspective of things should be done, okay? So I'm just really hoping they get it together because I'm like, I like them both from what I've seen off screen, just in public, just meeting them and greeting them. Good, upstanding individuals, you know what I'm saying? And they got, got a pretty little daughter and, you know, we already seen her grow up with Jocelyn in a sense. Uh, Cause Jocelyn keep on social media, and it'd be very tasteful pictures. It's just showing mother and daughter time, loving on each other. Okay, and that girl love her mom. Then got done with Stevie. I know you love your Bonnie Bella, cause you definitely done good with your uh, other girl you had with Mimi. Okay, beautiful young girl as well. Seems like she well rounded. Seems like y'all did the darn thing. But again, we all know Mimi uh, took you know the stance of raising the child, making sure. She, she was provided for. She had her food, shelter, clothing. With no uh, help from you, Stevie, that much. Because she even put you on blast. So we kind of get the pattern that you're making. That you love making babies, but you don't like taking care of them. And some of the other mama, baby mamas you got out there, they don't want to even come on TV to even stress about what you don't do for your children. But like I said, you try in the little ways you do, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm not going to judge you. Who am I? You know, to judge you. I had to take the whole, whole plank out of my eye before I try to get to your eye. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it is what it is. But as women, that's where we get a little antsy and we start blocking things. So, yeah, I can see the whole point. But guess what? Bunny Bella, she going to need her daddy because women... Somehow we just get like disconnected. We don't, we don't have a real good relationship with our dad. It's not at the formative years. It's more so when you get like in elementary, say the fifth grade on up into adulthood. They need their dad in their life because they want to be asking the hard questions of why men do this? Why do men do that? And the only person that they can get there from is their father or their dad. You know what I'm saying? So... I want y'all to get it together, Joyce. I really do. I'm going to throw prayers up for y'all because I like y'all too. And I like the, the unity of Bunny Bella growing up. You know, she seems to be very happy whether she's with you, Joyce, or whether she's with Hitman Stevie J. She still brings out joy. She lose love. She knows her parents, okay? But she don't know this bad side. And we don't want her to even catch a glimpse of frowning up or crying and being discontented with both of y'all, okay? Where the grandparents at? Where's the doggone grandparents? Maybe y'all y'all need to let the grandparents take care of Money Bella for a while since y'all can't seem to get it together, all right? Then when y'all both miss her and y'all can't get a hold of her and put on social media and this, that, and the third, and she's gone go living her life with the grandparents, you know what I'm saying? Temporarily, of course. But we don't want to put the burden on the grandparents because they all oh, they want to be living their best life too before they leave this world, okay? But just temporary custody give it to the grandparents okay and then they'll probably feel the the loneliness and 
the craziness that they're bringing to the lives of their daughter and to themselves. And they might regroup and rethink shit. You know, like, damn, okay, I miss her. Steve ain't got her. Joyce ain't got her. Well, damn. You know what I'm saying? You might seem to see a change start to form here. Okay, if you take Bonnie Bella out of the equation. All right? Because she need both of y'all. She really do. So I really hope y'all get it together. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Maybe y'all can take something from it. Do and go forth and be great in you all's lives. And that's all I have for this video. Y'all, thumbs it up. Subscribe to my channel. And share my videos. Got doggy. Okay? See y'all next video. Take care. Bye.